folks, welcome back to the UK Games Expo live stream. Uh, it's me, I'm still Millie. Here with me still is Kate. Are you all right, Kate? I'm very all right, Mills. How are you? I'm still good. I um, uh, During that break there, I, I made the mistake of check, not mistake, but um, I, I went and visited the UK Games Expo website and I'm now quite surprised to see it's only 100 days to go to this date that lives below me. Yep, 100 days to go to uh, to the Friday in July. Gosh. And then we will be good to run a show. We we really, really hope. Massive. Yes, all, all appendages crossed, please, people. We would very much like to run a physical show this year. As long as it is safe to do so, we are really hoping it is safe to do so. Excellent. So, yes. Yes, 100 days. Oh, my gosh. Um, and we've got a new friend here with us today. It's Christopher from Prometheus. How are you doing, my friend? Hello. Good afternoon. I'm doing very well, thank you. So I'm delighted to be um, being interviewed today on, on, on the UK Expo programme. And, um, yeah. We're doing very well indeed. Thank you. Good. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. You're welcome. I remember um, seeing Prometheus. It was one of the, the emails that went out. I remember looking at it and thinking, that looks very pretty. Um, but it's I'm very, very, very elegant, extremely yeah. critical game. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited to, to learn a little bit more about yourself and, and Prometheus as well. Um, first up, uh, like, is tell us about yourself. What, what, what got you involved in board gaming? What's your, your passion here? My passion is um, is education, uh, and I was um, a, a very young head of department at Froome College, and um, over many years I, I loved working. I loved students. Um, I, I loved my subject, and um, I was very lucky that we had a new build for drama and mathematics um, about twelve years ago. And when I typed drama and mathematics onto the internet, uh, as we had a one percent new build money from the government. Mm. Um, it took me to uh, Bangor University, where there are some symbolic sculptures um, that were created by a, a visionary sculptor called John Robinson. Mm. And I contacted Professor Ronnie Brown at the University of Bangor, and uh, he was delighted to let me know that John Robinson was just 20 years away. So we met and uh, I had the most amazing journey near Yeovil, where I, I, I went to John's garden. And it was just an Alice in Wonderland experience. <laughs> just beautiful sculptures all around. It was incredible. And then as we were walking up uh, the stairway, mm. um, something glistened in the corner of John's uh, office where he was doing all his sculpturing. And um, that's when I first saw the flame of Prometheus. And, and we were looking for a name for this million pound build at the college. Yeah. And um, I said to John, do you think it's possible you can, you can make a sculpture about four or five feet tall? College to adorn um, new lovely building because we were going to get Kevin McLeod from Grand Designs to open the building, mm -hmm. and he said I'd be delighted to. So that started a, a wonderful friendship um, with John. He, I took the maquette back to the college and I just placed it quietly onto the principal's desk. <laughs> and in the morning he said, "Christopher, what what are you up to here?" <laughs> That's said, nice I'll, I'll psychological, find... yeah. 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 So I said I found the name for the new building. The Promethea Center, it celebrates the contribution of the classical Greek civilization to the modern world. And I said, here's an opportunity for us to celebrate, you know, Plato, Aristotle, Pythagoras, and all these mm -hmm. great thinkers. And I thought, wow, this is a really great opportunity. And it also brings in the link between a drama and maths or music and maths. Mm -hmm. So um, the principal, Barry Bates, who's a lovely, inspirational head, said, yeah, I, I love this idea. Um, and um, so we called the building the Prometheus Centre. Uh, the sculpture was beautifully designed by Richard Stone, mm. um, working for Vertex Limited. And um, he, um, Richard, created the sculpture, and we became firm friends, uh, both John and I, and Richard and I. Um, and then a few years later, I said, I said to Richard, uh, "Wouldn't it be amazing if we could if we could just work again together? Because I've got mm. an idea for a game." The idea came to me almost like in a dream where I was um, thinking about my conversations with John Robinson and he was so passionate about the environment and he was so passionate about um, the population we're living in and, and, and how the world ne needs to take care of itself. Mm. And um, through those conversations with John, for some reason I, I got thinking about the, the links between various subjects and I thought about a few shapes like um, the sphere, the square base pyramid, the tetrahedron. Mm -hmm. I thought, I wonder if we could come up with something where the pieces were moving, the meaning of my mind, 
uh, based on the number of corners. And I woke up one day and I said to my brother, I said, I think I've got an idea for a, a, a game, a strategy game. And um, I ran the idea through him and he said, I think you've got something here. Mm. And uh, so I then ha had a meeting with um, a Dr. Matthew Critton with Abel and Imre based in Bath. Mm -hmm. and he said um, he genuinely felt that we had the first real genuine alternative to the game of chess in like 1,600 years. And I was going to say, he, that's that's pretty big. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. he said to me, please, please just go quiet because we want to do a search around the world and we want to protect the IP and patenting mm. as best we can mm -hmm. um, so that you can then progress and manufacture the game. Wow. So that was the story of how Prometheus came into being. So it's a building, uh, a lovely community college in Froome, Somerset, but it's now also um, a game that is generating of excitement um, around the world and, and there, are, there are some sets now that are being played in Greece and in Germany, um, in America. So uh, we are, you know, we're quietly optimistic and it's all thanks to Richard Stone, we've been able to manufacture the game at such high quality using an acrylic play surface mm. and zinc alloy pieces. Wow. So if I just show you yeah. just um, a couple of those pieces. So yeah, let's have a look. This is a, a lovely little scrap based pyramid here. Yeah. yeah. Because it's got five corners, it can move up to five spaces, forwards, backwards, but not diagonally. Uh -huh. And then we were looking at the, um, the tetrahedron, mm -hmm. which is our, which has got our, our four corners. Yeah. So that can move up to four. Nice. Um, and then our cube, the, a lovely cube that Rich has made. This is this is a very dynamic play piece because it can move up to eight, yes, up to eight squares. Um, and this is all thanks to really the genius of, of my business partner, Richard Stone, who has had a, a lifetime of experience in engineering. Mm. And he 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 uh, he and I worked together at his workshop in Gahampton, uh, sorry, in um, near Yeovil in East Coca. And uh, we've manufactured a play surface using a concave complex design because he wanted to be slightly different to chess. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but really, this, a significant moment happened thanks to the UK Expo because. Um, I met Richard and I met Kate and we talked about um, the possibility of a mainstream version. Richard said to me, um, it would be a great idea to make contact with because they could manufacture Prometheus a, a mainstream version mm -hmm. at, their, at their place in Ireland. So um, really it's thanks to UK Expo. Um, we're now in a really exciting situation where we can manufacture Prometheus at the same price point or similar price point to Monopoly and to Scrabble. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Very much so. So. So, just, so we're delighted with where we are at the moment. Yeah. I just take like to take a moment to maybe go back. And so you mentioned like the idea for, for Prometheus sort of came to you in like a, a dream sort of um, yeah. inspiration. I, were you always like a big strategy player? game player was this just no. just like out of the blue like a typical greek eureka kind of <laughs> it's, situation well, it's literally, literally genius isn't it genius the whole idea is that you had genius or devils uh, out or demons rather on the outside giving you whispering into your ear and whispering <laughs> you information so so 100 percent, it's it's working in exactly that fashion that's amazing well i, I, I in a way I, I was so incredibly fortunate I talked with John Robertson about sculptures. He used to say the ideas used to come to him. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, like and, and the sun used to come come into his mind, and he, he was able to create an idea um, that came to him. But I've been so lucky because through my work at Froome College, I then met Richard, and I then met John, or I met John and Richard, and they're links in a chain. And they all were wonderful people to talk to. Mm. They had some amazing, amazing views on life, and and they were so optimistic. And it's through that, the links in the chain, that has helped me to get to where I am now. And um, I'm so lucky because I've got such a talented team around me now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've got a wonderful um, creative director who's designed the website, Laura Jervis, and she's been absolutely fantastic. She's been with me all the way. Um, I've got a marketing director, David Gilmore, from Leaf and Bean Trading, and he's been absolutely brilliant. He's helping with the, with the marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so um, although we're a small team, you know, we're we're um, we're really dedicated, talented team. Um, we're quite excited by the fact that we have, have been through such a, a challenging year with the pandemic, and we see 
the, the role of Prometheus will help in a way with the healing of the country and help get people spending quality time together again. Mm. So many of our young people have just lost out on time with their friends. They've been stuck at home, uh, socially isolating. Yeah. And it, it just breaks my heart to think the sacrifice that people have made. And so what we're hoping also is that Prometheus will, will be, can be rolled out um, at Stono Independence. They're running the Prometheus Club alongside the Chess Club. Wow. Yeah. And, and That's now we're finding. Cool. Yeah. So the students love the game. And there's a lot of uh, student quotes um, on the website from the students where they, um, they feel that when they play chess and they lose, they sometimes feel a bit tough. But right. when they play Prometheus, because it's such a zappy, dynamic, easy to learn, fun game, mm. if they lose, they just want another game of Prometheus. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like why well, I, I did it that way last time but maybe this time i should have done you know that's yeah. tremendous yeah exactly that's exactly right and we're, we're so lucky because it's the games were fully road tested at the university of bath from some postgraduate students who said that the lovely combination of chaos mm. and strategy for the game so we thought oh my goodness this is really you know an exciting moment for us where we have got carter monday ireland um rolling out um, the mainstream version mm -hmm. to uh, to complement the fantastic success of Monopoly um, and Scrabble and, and other games, um, but we feel that this is like a new soul that's um, that's come into the stable block really. Yeah, and and it's ready to bring hope and yeah. joy around the world. Oh, it's lovely. I love how how striking it looks. It's like very, very classic, but very new. Should we take a moment to um, just have a have a watch? Because you've made this beautiful video that that really lovely, um, mm. really succinctly, I think is the good word, explains Thank the you. difference between and it, it sounds great. And I was uh, I was I enjoyed watching this. So we'll we'll take a moment to watch this. Um, and again, folks will be able to to watch this at their leisure over on the, the website that you've you've got going. Um, but yeah, hang on, let me let me click all the right buttons here. There we go. There we go. That's beautiful. Like I, I'm always intrigued by these. Did, was that like a day's worth of shooting and and like different lights and and a full sort of spectacular setup? What happened with that? Well, it was it was a it was a wonderful day. Um, even though it was a snowy day outside, and we were very lucky because um, Kingle of Manor in Bath was a, a country club, and they offered their facilities for free. Wow. Um, and uh, so we had a day's filming with um, with Bella. Uh, and Olivia from Sonar Independent School. Mm. And um, we, we basically invited them along 
Um, I was very, very fortunate to have made contact with Adam Gitchy in Mission Film. He's one of my former students. Oh, cool. And he, he'd only recently come back from um, making a documentary on Necker Island, uh, um, working with um, Richard Branson oh, gosh. Um, and his family. Oh, wow. So he was a very yeah. talented filmmaker. And um, he, I, I knew he was amazing at what he, what he did. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we met up and the whole project was about half a day filming. And then Adam Gitchy would spend perhaps two or three days just getting the editing right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really exciting. He was able to light up the squares yes. on the board. And when, with the last move, when Olivia just went into the, the cube, yes. eight places that changed the direction mm -hmm. yeah. two or three times. It was like a wow moment where you thought, oh my goodness. Mm. Yes. When, when I first saw that on the movie, I thought this is a really world-class piece of film work. It's, um, it is. And, um, and then right at the end, Adam even said, said to the team at Congrove Manor, do you mind, it's such a lovely place, do you mind if I send up my drone <laughs> and take some pictures of Bath um, above the building? So, so Congrove Manor got a lovely drone footage of the, of, of the building as well. So it was a lovely, lovely day. I think when I first saw the movie, that's when I realised that um, that things were really going to happen, and this, you know, great success story around the world, really. And mm. I, I was particularly pleased because, being really honest, I know that a lot of people that I know who've got young children say to me that they spend too much time um, with the computer games mm -hmm. and t too much time with some of the other online resources, and they just wish that they would just spend more time together. As, as a family, talking, laughing, bonding, person to person. So when I saw this movie, I realised that, um, <coughs> that um, Prometheus would go a long way to addressing that balance and hopefully bring people closer together in a family environment, in a friend environment, in cafes and restaurants. But then I realised it could be useful in hospitals for recovering patients, mm -hmm. in some cases, care homes. So, so we realised that in terms of reference for the game, um we could be you know could be absolutely fantastic i love some it's very much that open appeal isn't it because you've got this um elegant look and feel to the game um and because you're you're it's a strategy game but again like it says between five and 30 minutes depending on on how you're playing um that's yeah. that's quite incredible that's a big difference for a strategy game and yes it's yes. that quick not so much quick fire, but you've got to be um, you've got to be much more situationally aware, which sounds terribly poncy yeah. as a way to do it. But it is like a situational awareness of of where your pieces are, and where the other ones are. You've got to be as much more options to be able to get to the, into different places. And I think exactly. that's that's tremendous. Exactly. Oh, thank you. I mean, I think for me, what a really exciting moment was the fact that <clears throat> I, I played a few games with my brother, <clears throat> and the object of the game, as, as you would know, is that the player um, has got to land on the sphere. Mm -hmm. Yes. And because the sphere doesn't have any corners, it doesn't move at all. Mm. And, and when, I, when I first had this vision of Prometheus, I thought to myself, oh my goodness, because Prometheus gave the gift of fire yes. to the mortals mm -hmm. uh, whilst the gods were sleeping, there's, there's an opportunity for sacrifice. Mm. So the idea that you actually sacrifice one of your pieces, um, either on the back row or the middle row, and replace it with your, your beautiful sphere here yeah. yes um i suddenly thought it was almost like waiting to be discovered because it suddenly all became a, a lovely link with prometheus with classical greek civilization um with a you know a lovely strategy game really mm. so but I, my, my background is not really as a, as a gaming enthusiast i i it just happened um these links in the chain happened and we're now in an exciting position where we want to get prometheus rolled out now yeah I, I really like it, the the names you've came up for the the pieces like the um, tetra and that was the was there a, uh, th did that come as well or was there an iteration on like you know do we call it a cube and do we call it a triangle and do we call it you know a, or, or what was the what was the the process there? That's a lovely question. That's a lovely question, Millie. Really. I mean, I, I being honest, um, I have tried different iterations mm -hmm. of play pieces, but and I've tried different names. <clears throat> but the more the more and more I've, I've worked on this, I've realised that it was almost like this was meant to be. It's meant to be uh, a concept with three lines of eight pieces, one mm -hmm. sphere, um, to keep the names as simple as possible. 
So tetra was short for tetra tetrahedron. Yeah. Um, Pyra, I thought, was square based pyramid is quite a long name. Yes. <clears throat> the cube is a cube. I mean, I had thought about naming them differently, perhaps looking at the elements. But I think that the, what I did, I saw the advice of young people. And I, I said, what do you think? And they said, no, we love it. Keep it as simple, as straightforward, and sappy as possible. We love the names, we love the concept, we love it more than cats. Um, and so, <clears throat> really, it's children between the age of seven and 16 helped me to take the vision forward because I wanted to get feedback on them. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, is there any way you can improve it? And so we're having some really interesting conversations. Um, but I think one, I just want to keep the names straightforward. But in a future iteration, mm -hmm. we may look at um, Prometheus having pieces that are actually the names of Greek gods. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, so we are looking at that. First, we just want to get the, the mainstream, so we want to get the um, mainstream version out and make it successful. Yeah, no, I, I think the the names are lovely. It's like... Thank I, you. I, <laughs> often, like with sometimes when you go into naming things and it's long and complicated, then you become a little bit confused about what the yeah. the, the, the thing is that the thingy or the ummy. And no, you've got exactly. you've got very classic simple names. I, I do like them. I like I love the design thank as well. They look gorgeous. Thank you, thank you. I mean, we were very lucky as well because um had some great help from very professional companies thanks to my business partner Richard Stone. So um, um, Tealwood have been great in making the high quality boxes which were flopped on the mm. executive sets the boxes yeah. were flopped and when i first saw those boxes i couldn't believe it that each piece had its own home and, and the actual flocking looked like a little like a dashboard of like the main <laughs> drove with box you know it looked so high quality <clears throat> so we got thanks to you for that and then mrt castings they made the um the executive pieces they were wonderful um because they, they work through the night mm. to get the zinc alloy pieces made because they knew that they were going to um, have a huge demand the following day uh, from the government to make hospital parts for ventilators. Oh, so my MRT, goodness. Yeah. So oh. MRT, MRT yeah. were wonderful to us, and they just made sure that they made the executive sets on time before they honoured that agreement, before the next day when they, they were called to arms, really, to help, to help in the pandemic. So... And then our packaging company, we, we've, we've used a wonderful packaging company called Southwest Packaging in Gillingham. And Patrick and the team there have been really helpful. So, so we've been really lucky to, to have so many dedicated people who seem to be, like, they seem to be on our wavelength and we, they really try to understand what, what, what we're trying to do. Yes. Um, but I think a big challenge for me has been to keep optimistic um, as the pandemic unfolded. Mm -hmm. Um, and to find a way to get people to really love the game mm -hmm. in the way that we love the game. Once they once they play it, they love it. Mm -hmm. But it is it is quite a challenge when you've made when you've made a concept with very um, high price materials mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to um, to have a retail price that's three figures. Yes. So I think I think now that we've got the mainstream version, uh, thanks to Cartamundi Island, um, because that is a price similar to Monopoly, that what we're hoping is a very small portion of people that love the game will then go on our website and say, you know what, I'd love to have a lifetime version of my grandmum or my granddad. I'd love to have almost like a family heirloom. Yeah. So so we have got these 257 made and we've got the infrastructure to make more. Mm -hmm. um, but I think our focus at the moment is getting the getting the mainstream version out. And Cartamundi can manufacture um, 6,000 units per week. Wow. If That's they need tremendous. to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're delighted with, with, all the, with all the things coming together, really, and, and all the dedication and the enthusiasm of everybody involved. It's been, it's been an amazing journey for me because the whole journey really has taken about nine years to get to this point. Goodness. <laughs> That's tremendous, and uh, and to meet up with such wonderful craftspeople, um, yeah. who obviously have such um, uh, lovely and honourable business acumen. I mean, it, yeah. it would have been so easy for those guys to say, "No, you know what? We need to 
manufactured <laughs> ton of this thing sorry chaps you've just got a game it's like no you know what we can do this and yeah. fulfill it overnight that's that's actually yeah that's really good it, it does seem to be like the gods on your side with this whole thing i can't okay. help but this is like some kind of modern day miniature uh, ritual to say yeah you know we'll remember this and like the cube being mercury because it could just dash yeah. around the board apart from yeah, yeah I, I really love that I, I i just love the idea that, that when things sort of the world you, you may have say a young couple coming home they haven't got time to have a game of chess but they're going out later on you know, and, and that, that they've got a little bit of time between yeah. coming home, you know, and then going out. And they think, let's have a, a little game of Prometheus before we go out. Yeah. You know, so that whole idea about, about fun, enjoyment, um, laughter, particularly at this time when it's been so difficult, yeah. um, we, we feel that, um, you know, fingers crossed, if we can start to move towards a, a more normal life, then... Um, then Prometheus will be part of that, part of that enjoyment, and then that mm. solution. We've had one or two charity events before the lockdown. They've gone really, really well. Um, so we're just hoping and praying that we can um, really get this rollout over the next few weeks. Yeah, I was going to ask because um, obviously um, previous um, uh, shows we've spoken with folks like the Mind Sport Olympiad with Etienne, and they kind of. Um, have lots of tournaments and organized events is that something you see for for prometheus going forwards yes definitely i mean so far um once it's 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 come out of its um its maps as it were mm -hmm. um it's featured in the sunday times magazine wow. um, last december and it's also been in the london chelsea magazine um and so we were delighted with the, the feedback we received from there um but i think now that we've got um a mainstream version we would love to have as well as schools taken on as part of the after school clubs, mm -hmm. um, we would, you know, we, we, we can see it being rolled out in lots, lots of areas and having lots of charity events um, and, and seeing how that momentum gains, really. But I think a lot depends on um, our society opening up, mm -hmm. people still uh, take, being sensible, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully, hopefully, think across the worst is over with, with mm -hmm. the global pandemic. But I think. Some of the challenge we were having was the fact that we could have got Prometheus into some lovely hotels around the world because of the pandemic. Yes. Um, we, we just weren't able to do that. So I've had to learn to be incredibly patient, mm. but whilst being quietly optimistic, as the timelines have changed. And um, I think the advice I give to anyone who's got a fantastic idea is to just be, be patient, mm. be passionate about what you're trying to do. And and it will it will all come good in the end, it, and you've got to really believe in your product. I think I think the fact that Richard Stone believed in me yeah. all those years ago, you know, and, and all my team around me believe in what I'm trying to do, it's made a huge difference. But yeah, I would love to see, I'd love to see an evolving um, society whereby uh, Prometheus starts to become a name that people associate with a fun, zappy, dynamic game that helps to bring yes. people together. And I know that at one or two schools with international students, it's actually really helped international students to come out of their shell, mm -hmm. where they may feel um, that, you know, uh, students from other countries, getting to know them from, from their country, uh, has sometimes it, they're quite shy and they're quite, I think Prometheus has served as a vehicle where they'll play mm -hmm. a game and, and they've, they've, they've created new friendships. Which has, which has been fantastic for us. So, um, you know, we're really delighted. It's thing of, being, of having games as the shared language yeah. as well. So um, we see it because we host the the Curtan and the Carcassonne uh, leaders up into Essen. And then you saw it, I saw it at Essen as well, where there's people from all around the world playing one particular yeah. game. I mean, Prometheus would be a lovely, a lovely addition to be able to do, to do that and to see that. So it's like, you know, you don't, necessarily share more things than knowing how the pieces move but that encourages the communication and uh yeah okay, there are no language barriers yeah. there are no language barriers and yeah. that's 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 so so wonderful so you know um where we have special needs schools or say schools for the deaf you could have, you could say have children playing no, no public schools no, there are no language barriers at all yeah so it's like an international language really mm -hmm. yes and it's lovely to see i saw um two young children playing the game and that they're 
they're from Athens in Greece, and, and, and I couldn't really talk um, Greek that well. Yeah. <laughs> and, and their language skills were not, but English were not, not not that developed at that moment. But it was lovely to see them laugh and have fun. And particularly the fact that Prometheus is a concept that celebrates Greece and nice. celebrates the fact that Prometheus has got a shrine in Athens. Mm-hmm. Um, it was lovely to see a Greek family playing Prometheus and having fun. I yeah. Think, as those those moments, as like the the game creator, as the the person who who had this moment, this vision. It, do you do you sit there and you're just like, wow, look at yeah from from that moment where you're like. <gasps> And then there yeah. it is in physical form and other people and you, you, you can't chip in because you don't have the lang- the right language yourself to, to sort of get involved. How does that feel? What is that like for, for yourself? It just feels amazing. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's so good that, that thanks to people that have helped me, that it, it's, um, it's going to bring a lot of joy and happiness um, around the world. And the fact that it's so straightforward, I was convinced that, that there'll be something that was similar or something that would, you know, that was already been thought about. But mm-hmm. when yeah. people in the way said to me, it hasn't. Yeah, it was an amazing feeling. But to see people play it and enjoy it, mm. um, for me personally, I, I feel I've just been the vehicle to enable all of this to happen. And it's lovely to see, for example, um, with some of the families where, where I teach, to see grandparents and parents and children play the game like three versus three. That's lovely as well to see intergenerational Prometheus games. And that's a lovely special bond between grandparents and grandchildren. You can also play it three versus three Mm -hmm. or two Uh, versus two or one versus three. But yeah, yeah, so it's a lovely feeling. So I feel now it's finally got a platform and now it's generating, it's got, it seems to have a a life of its own now. Yeah. (laughs) That's, that's and I'm just delighted and super proud to be part of it. But mainly I'm just super proud of the people around me that, that have helped me mm-hmm. and supported me, you know. And, uh, you know, even, even when I first said to my brother, what do you think, Anthony? What do you think about this game? He said, I think you've got something here. You know, yeah. if he'd have said, no, I just think it's not very good, you know. So it's been an amazing nine-year journey, but I think next year could be really, really exciting. Mm, absolutely, yes. What was the process? Uh, oh, go on, Kate. Sorry, I was going to say, we 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 should, if we can run a show, should be able to see you guys at this year's expo. Yes, definitely. We we, we have um, we have booked there, and we're looking forward to spending all three days with you and your team. Uh, we can't wait, and we're just delighted to be part of Expo, you know, 20, 2021. Delighted the fact that, you know, Richard Denning said, go, go, go to Carter Monday, and they're your next step been here had it not been for you and your team and Richard's advice we we would still probably be trying to get the executive version out but I think now that we've got the mainstream version out it, it, it's, it's really exciting so we can't wait mm. to go to the NEC we can't wait to showcase Prometheus um, in Birmingham which is a you know a beautiful place beautiful part of the country and um, we look forward to seeing you seeing Richard and the team seeing Millie mm-hmm. and um, we'll just enormously grateful for all of your dedication all of your hard work when often it's it's so difficult for you all as well you know working from home and having all of these challenges associated with communication we're just so grateful to to have such a fantastic team to work with and it's, it's absolutely lovely to to have someone so enthusiastic on board i mean there is there is clearly a belief um, that comes with the game, which is which is wonderful, and the fact that you have such a talented and supported team around you yeah. um, as well is is tremendous. Thank you. So, Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm just I just feel so lucky, really, and and I think a lot of success in in life does come from luck. But I think you really do have to be passionate and and have a yes. vision for what you're trying to achieve. And th- and then when you do get days where things don't go so well, you just keep taking small steps. Mm. You keep saying, look. I'm sure there's a way around this. I'm sure we can do this. And then, yeah, and then suddenly fate plays a part and you suddenly think, yeah, this is actually, this is really exciting. This is great. And I love, I love the idea of people linking up, you know? So mm-hmm. even even the um, the company, Sakesos in the Netherlands, have uh, done a great job just supplying our, our little pouches for the pieces. You know, and even the way they communicate and get back to me really quickly 
um, and uh, hand stitching bags and day pieces. Gosh. It's just it's just wonderful. So we've got lots of different countries, lots of different people helping, but they all seem to be contributing towards um, almost like a, a beautiful tapestry, and mm. they're all playing their part. But I think the most exciting for me is the fact that it's going to bring so much joy, happiness, um, and fun and laughter in many homes, clubs, and societies across the country um, after such a really tough year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so getting your, um, getting our hands on Prometheus, what is, what is like, how do we do it? How do we do it? <laughs> well, the, um, the mainstream version boxes will be ready. They'll be shipped from Ireland in four weeks time. Oof. So I think for people who would like to have, have an early look at Prometheus on the mainstream version, if they go to our website at www dot prometheus dot com then they'll see the um the website they can play the movie and they can register an interest mm. in the mainstream version which is a similar price point to monopoly and scrabble and then we will make contact with them as soon as we get the first shipment from ireland um the um the deluxe versions the beautifully made deluxe versions my business partner Richard Stone, the deluxe versions, uh, we do have 250 sets already manufactured. So we wanted to, we wanted to get those manufactured first, mm-hmm. give the vision. And in fact, so, so they're available, um, they're available um, on, on the website. So the website has been updated to incorporate um, to incorporate three main sets. We've got the, the mainstream version, mm-hmm. the executive sets, and then Richard. Has, has actually done an amazing job where he's created a small number of units where they've been powder coated in a beautiful green, green and black. Very nice. And there's some orange and black sets as well. And and uh, a few months ago, when we we heard that the, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson was um, recovering in hospital from COVID, um, I read in the Times that he was actually um, playing Sudoku as part of his recovery when he had been yeah. So we decided to send one of our uh, golden black sets to the Prime Minister uh, to help with his recovery. Um, and that, that reached him when he uh, went to Checkers for recovery. No, we actually sent it to number 10, Downing Street. So yeah. um, I received a lovely letter back from the Prime Minister, a handwritten letter, thanking oh. me for Prometheus and uh, <laughs> saying you know, he's looking forward to checking out his strategy moves. That's amazing. So that's really, really lovely as well. So we've got we've got a set in number 10 that's going to stay there for future prime ministers oh. so that when there's a new prime minister, it's like a gift to the country, really. Yeah, I was going to ask Absolutely. then. Does it does it yeah. get does does the prime minister get to take it when, when they move on? Or no, does it he doesn't, stay no. for the next one? He's not one? allowed. Oh. No. <laughs> it's got to stay there. I like it. It's for no, number 10. It, yeah. If it's a gift, it's got to, it's got to stay at, it's got to stay at number 10. Um yeah. Because because of rules. Because of rules, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's cool. But um, so, yeah. So that's you... so that's that's you know if you if you're going to have the executive set, it's the proper executive set as seen at Ten Downing Street. So yeah, yeah, and indeed. For the next, you know, uh, and and also the, 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 the uh, senior director, Dyson Engineering, um, has also played the game and he loves it. And he's saying he, he congratulates us on the on the quality of the of of you know the design work. Mm-hmm. It's all thanks to Richard Stone. So. He, so, so Dyson Engineering has um, has seen the product as well. Wow. So we're excited. We're excited um, with that. We, I think the price point is that it's been a big challenge mm-hmm. um, because because of the the, the quality of the, the zinc and aluminium mm-hmm. um, in the acrylic clay surface. But um, but I think I think now that we've got the mainstream version, then that's it just takes it to a new level, really. Yeah. What yes, was absolutely. that? What was that process like? Because obviously there's there's always a concern when you make a, something in a bigger volume that you will not have the same feel or the same. So what was that process like going from your, your aluminium and your zinc to, to a, um, what did we call it? The, the mainstream, the version. mainstream, mainstream version. version. Yeah. That's an ex- excellent question. I mean, w- with Lewis Young and Carter Monday, we wanted the, um, the materials ultimately to be uh, eco-friendly. Mm-hmm. So, um, we we are we are using carbon. We are using recyclable plastic, but we're not we're not we're not using the zinc and aluminium. So the game will be lighter. Mm-hmm. It'll be a similar size 
to Monopoly and Scrabble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but what we're delighted about is that the, uh, the essence of the game, yeah. the integrity of the game yeah. has been maintained. So the, yes. the play pieces, um, although they're lighter, um, they're, still, they're still the same colors, mm -hmm. co color combinations. So the play pieces are still gold um, and black. Um, Laura Jervis has designed a, a beautiful play surface. So it's a board that's going to fold in half mm -hmm. rather than quarters. Mm -hmm. um, so we still got the, the artwork for Prometheus on the, on the boards. Um, the, the board play surface is, is square, but the mm -hmm. concave convex design mm -hmm. um, that was first created by Alex Goffman of Genetra Parametrics, a um, local successful company, mm -hmm. and that concave convex um, design, um, it still stands, but we've got, we've got that onto um, you know, a, a high quality play surface. Mm -hmm. So overall, uh, we're delighted that Carter Mundo have been able to um, come up with something that's high quality, but at a, a price point, um, you know, 30 something pounds, it's similar to Monopoly and Scrabble. Mm -hmm. No, was that, was that an interest? Was there a backwards and forwards? Like, what about this material? What about, how would you feel about maybe doing this? And was it, was it an interactive experience? To some extent, but I think, because I knew Carter Monday were such a fantastic organization, and because they were manufacturing close to a million sets of Monopoly per week leading yes. up to Christmas wow. yeah. to go around the world, then I had total trust in the team that they would do a fantastic job. They said, we'd love to help you, but can you just wait until after <laughs> Christmas? <laughs> yeah. Just give us a fortnight. <laughs> yeah. A few that, sets that of Monopoly to get out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so we were quite happy to wait, but they are consummate professionals. So we, we just waited until... Um, you know, the sales of Monopoly and, and all of that work there um, have been completed. But I think a lot of it is based on trust. And we've had some great Microsoft Teams meetings with the engineering team. Yeah. Mm. And so they've been able to talk through the process of how they're going to manufacture the pieces. Um, and we're just so impressed with the, just the level of sophistication, level of design work of all the people involved. It's just, it's just amazing that we've got so many tons of people in this country. Um, and I just feel so proud that this is a British product, British made, um, that will hopefully bring a lot of fun and enjoyment around, uh, around the world. And mm. I think it'd be really successful in, in, um, in India and in China and Europe. So we're, we're, you know, we're delighted that it will have a far reaching um, impact um, on the world. And, hopefully raise self-esteem and confidence and fun and enjoyment amongst so many of our young people. Yeah. So um, I think we just, we just trusted them really. So that was, they knew what they were, they knew what they were doing. Yeah. Um, all I've really had to do once we've got the design through is, is give the, uh, establish a, a good for the bags for the piece of the play pieces, mm -hmm. but virtually everything else um, they've taken on board and they're so mm -hmm. well organized. They get back to me really quickly. So I think anyone who's, who does have a, a vision or a dream uh, of having their own game, I, I would, well, I'd recommend the UK Expo team. And I'd, <laughs> I'd also recommend Carter Monday um, in Ireland because they've got the infrastructure there uh, that if, if the concept is really successful, then they can deliver and, and um, create a large number of games. Fantastic people with the tooling on board that they can, yes. they can tool the resources quickly and professionally. Wow. I mean, that's very, very cool. It, it's wonderfully exciting. Like if even just a fraction of your, your love and your enthusiasm is captured in each of these games, uh, um, going out across the world, it's going to, going to just, just uh, lift up hearts. I think it's, it's, it's lovely Thank to, you. to Thank chat you. with you, Christopher. It's brilliant. Like, uh, likewise. Yeah. Likewise me, likewise Kate. Yes. Yeah, it's lovely to talk with you and, and thank you for all what you're doing, you know, and I think, um, I, I think sometimes, in certain roles that we have, we can't always see the impact of our work on the wider society. But I think if we just take a moment to think about what we do and how we do it, um, and that we are we are doing something that's pro-social, mm -hmm. helping bring people together and helping people to get on, then I think I think what we're doing is is more important than we may realise. Yes, that's beautiful. That's so thank you for what you're doing as well. Oh. Oh, this, this is this is this is true. This is good. This I know <laughs> you guys are on my list of um, 
I have a list of people who's like, I really want to see these guys at the show. Uh, and often that that just doesn't happen because I, yeah. I work for the show, well, well, we work the show. And, um, uh, but it's kind of like, no, I, I really need to come past. I need to see you guys on the thing. So yeah, Prometheus Can't wait. is a Can't wait to see you there. Yeah. Even if it's like a, hey, hello, right? Yes, yeah. this is, and then, you know, <laughs> but yes, yeah, definitely. No, so, it'd be great. It'd be great. It'd be, be great to see you there. Yes. Um, we're just hoping and praying that it, that, that things will, will be fine mm -hmm. and, and that everyone's yeah. sensible, but we've actually got, a, a, you know, a physical uh, event. Yes. Um, so I'm delighted that the, the, the timeline has moved so that it's at the, at the end of July. Mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic, a fantastic yeah. decision. And um, yeah, we're really excited and looking forward to, um, to be part of the 2021 UK Expo. Yeah. Good. But in the meantime, yeah. do check out um, prometheusconcept.com. Have a look yes. at the look at the amazing sets and then also the mainstream set as well. I like to, it looks about the right size to throw in a backpack and take to somewhere like average your board yes. gamers. Go down and play <laughs> yeah. games with folks and, and get started. Um, um, do check them out. Um, Congratulations on, on such a beautiful and exciting looking game, Christopher. Yes. Thank you very um, much indeed. I definitely would come and have a have a my game would probably be the five minute. Anybody who's watched me play games, I'm <laughs> not the strategy gamer. So my game will be the five minute one. Um, but maybe it's five <laughs> minutes for you to win. Oh well, yeah, yeah that, that's that's that an idea. Yeah, that's an idea. You suddenly yeah. see a move and you think, oh my goodness, I can actually do this. Yeah. Yeah. But it, yeah, you know? it, it looks like one of those games where uh, like I was saying with Adam before, where you go Oh, I see oh, what you're thinking now. See, yeah. That kind of stuff. Definitely looks like when one of those. When you suddenly see a move in your mind, you think, oh my goodness. Yeah. Even if you're two or three place, pieces um, behind, you can suddenly see a flash of inspiration and you're just in there and you win the game. Yeah. And if you That's lose, tremendous. you don't go quest. You just want another game from Meteos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But... You can't draw. It's impossible to draw. And um, yeah, if you lose, you just want another game. Just it seems like no two games are the same. Mm -hmm. That's the other exciting part of it as well. Yeah. That's wonderful. But yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. We'll be back next week. Yes, it's more, yep. yeah. I'm just checking because I know, like, when it when we get to a hundred days out from things, that's when like light bulbs are changed to like amber ones and yes, steady, yeah. steady. I think oh, okay. we're we're going with cautious teal, teal at okay. present. Yes, we're not quite on the reds yet, but uh, so, so work yeah. our way over there. But yeah, we'll be back next week with some some well wonderful chats with lunchtime. Um, and yeah, it's a pleasure to chat with you, Christopher. Uh, do Likewise. check out the UK Games Expo website where uh, news from Hereford Board Gamers and from Prometheus uh, will go up in the in the next couple of days or so. And then um, if you wanted to watch this again, don't forget we have a, a YouTube channel where you can come and check us out and see all our previous guests as well. Um, thank you again. I um, hope everybody has a wonderful My week. My pleasure. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Thank you very Thanks, much guys. for your time. Bye. Take care. Thank you.